I am Anil Kumar and here is a very interesting question on domain and range of functions. This is going to help students who are taking calculus at university level or in grade 11 and 12. The question here is determine domain and range of f of x equals to square root of x minus 3 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 1. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestion. Now let's begin by finding domain of this function, right? So as you can see, the denominator has a restriction. It can never be zero. So when we are considering domain, what we have is that this function cannot have x equals to 1. However, the square root imposes other restrictions also. And those are that the term x minus 3 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 1 should not be less than 0. It cannot be negative, right? So it has to be greater than 0, right? So this has to be greater than or it could be equal to 0. So it has to be non-negative. So, so the restriction here is that this term inside should be non-negative. Since the square root of negative term is not real, so that is one restriction. The other restriction is that the denominator x minus 1 cannot be 0. So this is one. The other restriction here is that x minus 1 is not equal to 0. Now from x minus 1 not equal to 0, we do get 1, that is x is not equal to 1. Correct? Now, how about this part? How do we solve this? That is what we need to think about. We can solve for this looking into the intervals, right? So now we'll analyze the intervals using uh, some values. So what do we notice here is that we get zeros of numerator and denominator at 3, minus 2, and 1. So we will analyze the intervals which are formed because of those zeros, right? So I'm just creating a table to do the same. So what we have here is that we have a zero at minus two, right? X plus two will be zero at, let us say, we'll write minus two here. And then X minus one will be zero at one and x minus 3 will be 0 at 3. So these are x values where we have zeros. Correct? So let, let me write zeros here. Now these zeros divide our plane in four intervals. So we'll analyze each and every interval. So we'll, we're talking about now intervals. So this interval is from minus infinity to minus 2. The other one is from minus 2 to 1, then 1 to 3, and 3 to infinity. So in these intervals, we'll take test points just to check whether the given function is positive or negative in those intervals. So here we could take test point as minus 3, a test point of 0 is good here, test point of 2 and 4. So these are the test points in our intervals, right? Okay, now within these intervals, we are going to analyze these factors. So the factors for us are, let me write them in order. So we have factor x plus 2. Then this 0 is because of x minus 1 and this is because of x minus 3. These three factors. If I substitute minus 3 here, I get negative. If I substitute 0, I get positive, right? And these will also be positive. For x minus 1, minus 3 will give me negative, 0 will give me negative, 2 and 4 will give me positive. For x minus 3, minus 3 will make it minus 6, which is negative, 0 will be minus 3, which is negative, 2 will be minus 1, which is negative, 4 will be plus 1, which is positive. Now, as far as this function is concerned, let me write f of x, let me write g of x, because f of x is square root of f of x, f of x is square root of g of x. 
Now that we get by multiplying these factors. Three negatives, when you multiply, you get negative. Two negatives will give you positive. One negative will give you negative. Four positives, when you multiply and divide, you get positive. So what we observe here is that there are two intervals where the function is positive, right? And these intervals are these two, right? So let me just mark these two intervals. So these are the intervals of our interest, right? So this one and this one. So these are the intervals. They are fine. Now in these intervals, you also notice that we cannot have 1 since 1 makes the denominator 0. So we could write this interval as from minus 2 to 1, 1 is not included. And for that interval, it is from 3 is included to infinity. You cannot include infinity, right? So now we finally get our domain. So the domain is x belongs to real numbers where x is between, so you can write this as from minus 2 is included, right? So, and 1 is not included, right? And it is when x is greater than or equal to 3, right? So greater than or equal to 3. So that becomes the domain of this particular function, okay? So we have found the domain. And that is the strategy which you can use to find domain. Now let's look into range. As far as the range is concerned, we know square root function is always positive. So for range, the thinking is kind of like this. Uh, it is always positive. I should say non-negative. It could be zero, right? Non-negative. Now, what values are permitted here? This is what we need to see. So it is a good idea to sketch the function. Well, you could safely write range as greater than or equal to zero. But to be sure, let us try to try to sketch, not completely, but uh, partly, right? So what we'll do here is, we know the zeros at least, correct? And we also know the interval of our interest, which is from minus two to one and beyond three, right? So what we have here is a vertical asymptote at, at one. So let's draw this vertical asymptote. This is at one. And we know that the function is, can have values from minus two to one. So this is, let's say minus two. So we could have something between this interval and then we could have from three to infinity, from three to infinity. That is what we can have. Now to sketch a function, we need to find the values at these boundaries. So one is minus two. Then here we have one and then we have three. If I write minus two, I get a zero. If I write three, I get a zero. So zero is included, perfect. At one, we know it is an asymptote and since the denominator is zero and is going to point upwards, infinite asymptote, right? To find a point here, we can substitute zero here. Zero within the square root will give us, so let's find the value of this function at zero, right? So that will give us square root of, if I write zero here, minus three times two divided by minus one, right? Which is square root of six. So, so we have a zero here, square root of six, right? So we could say square root of six is the value the y-intercept. So that kind of gives you an idea that this side of the graph could be kind of like this. That's the asymptote. And on this side, it starts from zero. You could take some more values, and of course it is going to be increasing. So that gives you an idea that the range should be y belongs to real numbers, where y is greater than equal to zero, because for two values it is zero, right? So it is always increasing. That's how the square root functions normally are. And that's how you can kind of write down with confidence. You could have written this range even without sketching. I hope that works. So in this video, we have learned how to find the intervals when the square root inside function is 
positive or non-negative. And then how to estimate the range. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that gives you a good review on functions uh, which you had learned earlier. Thank you and all the best.